energetic, passionate, and savvy. Gooch Live, brought to you by the good people at the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Gooch. It's Aussie time. Yes, sir. Aussie style. My good friend Sam Trapolino has organized Jason Gillespie. He is a legend. He is one of those guys that you may have never heard his name if you're here in Canada, but he is one of Australia's best cricket players. Not only is he a coach, but also uh, he was one of the best players, and we hopefully can get him on here. I know we've been having some trouble with the internet over in Australia. They say they have the best internet on the planet. Uh, not right now, they don't. We're struggling a little bit, so we're hoping that uh, we get uh, Jason on in a few minutes. I know that Sam's working the telephone to see if we can make it happen, but before that, guys, I'm here. Good evening, Barry Shelley. Uh, great to see you. Sorry about my Jets. Yes, they did not look good tonight. Full marks to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and what's most important is Joe Thornton and that little nasty in him. I love it. That's going to be all important while we go into, obviously, the playoffs. Again, I know everybody's chirping and everybody's excited and the Leaf fans are going crazy. They haven't won the Stanley Cup yet, guys, so let's all temper it. Uh, Montreal, I'm really concerned about what's going on there. Caden Primo, Primo started his uh, third game in the National Hockey League. He played well. The team didn't really play that well in front of him, and they lost 4-2 to Calgary. And now, guys, the Calgary Flames – are making it very interesting. And so my question to everybody that's watching, and you please on the right-hand side, make sure you send me a little bit of a, a excitement. Think about this for a second. The Montreal Canadiens hear the footsteps of those Calgary Flames. So that means... Just pulling up the stats right here, guys, so bear with me. Ottawa Senators are up against the Vancouver Canucks right now. That also has some bearing on the Montreal Canadiens. The uh, Vancouver Canucks are not out of it also. They've got games in hand, and they're a few uh, points back. So I'm just looking those stats up right now. I don't know if they include tonight's game. No, they do not. Calgary sits four points behind uh, with uh, Montreal having a game in hand. And uh, Vancouver Canucks now sit with six, six games in hand and only 10 points behind. So I'll tell you what, Montreal is in a little bit of a trouble. So if you're a Montreal Canadian fan, I'll tell you what, somebody's got to inject some life into it. Hey, listen, I'm saying hello to our good friend, uh, Aaron Kuzak. Two internet connections in Adelaide. Max, the place is out. Flames looking how Habs, well, we'll leave that alone. I think they, uh, the Flames doused the Habs. And, of course, uh, what's really unbelievable is uh, we are awake. We're just waiting for Sam to pop up. If we can't get Jason Gillespie tonight, we will fix and rectify the issue, but we certainly will make it happen. Uh, Brady, thank you for joining us. Always great to see you out there. Hey, Barry, ba 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 right? Great to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Listen, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, cricket tonight. Regardless if we get Jason uh, up or not, I know that uh, our friend Sam Trapolino will fill us in tremendously, not only about, obviously, Jason Gillespie, but cricket in general. And I know I got some of my friends on here that may not have any idea what cricket is. And I'm going to ask you right off the bat, uh, Brady, do you have any idea any idea the rules in cricket? If you don't, here's the man, Sam Trapolino. Sammy, what's going on? Uh, as Aaron said, we've just got a phone call from the Power Network, and we have two internet connections have fried the server here in South Australia. We apologise to the 65 other people in our state. Um, yeah, just terrible kind of internet. But we do have good news. He is coming here right now. He's on his way to my house. He will be sitting here next to me in the Adelaide Oval. Give us five, maybe seven minutes. He will be sitting here with us. So even if we have to do this in two parts, because once you get talking to this man, even if you're Canadian, you're still going to buy into what he's saying. He's still a passionate sports person. He's still a, a vicious sports person, um, but uh, a loving father, a loving coach. Um, and yeah, he's going to be well worth the listen tonight. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Brady, I asked him if he played or he even knew anything about cricket, and he played it in high school. Fantastic. Great to hear. Hey, listen, uh, Aaron Kuzak's coming up and saying, go the Knights. I guess you're talking about the Las Vegas Knights, I hope, if, if I'm reading this correctly. Or did uh, Jason have anything to do uh, with a team named the Knights? I think he had the Punjab Knights. I think that was his uh, possibly the um, IPL in India, the English, pre uh, the Indian Premier League. That could be that. Uh, Aaron's going to have to clarify for us, or it could be the uh, Newcastle Knights if he's a NRL fan. Well, so you know what I'm going to say is that I said this today actually when I was talking to somebody. Listen, I got uh, Jason Gillespie coming on. He's one of those cricketers, and somebody did ask this question. True story, and look at what Aaron's put up. Isn't cricket a bug? <laughs> and all I can hear right now is crickets. Crickets. Thanks, Barry. Barry loved it's the hat. Called a, it's called a baggy green. And uh, if you're Australian or follow test cricket at all, it's sacred. So I want to tell you right now, the Toronto Maple Leafs have con convincingly beat the Winnipeg uh, Jets, no question. And they will retain first spot in the uh, Scotia North Division. So it looks like Toronto will be playing the fourth place team, which is right now Montreal. However, Calgary has beaten Montreal and are now only four games back, though Montreal has a one game in hand. But tonight, right now, as it as we are on here, uh, the Vancouver Canucks are playing the Ottawa Senators. They've got six games in hand and 10 points back. When you, That means they have six more games to play uh, than the Montreal Canadiens. The only thing is that when you have those amount of games, you got to win them all. So yeah. uh, I'm not sure that will happen, but certainly it's going to make it interesting. And, of course, Aaron Kuzak has said yes <laughs> to the Knights. And obviously the Knights are one of only two teams that have clinched a playoff berth. Oh, Brady, yeah. Vegas and Colorado. So we're looking forward to that. And, Brady, thank you. Absolutely. Go Canucks, go. I think you know yourself, Sam. We did uh, have some issues over here with the Vancouver Canucks. Obviously, having the COVID scare, it was a, a massive story. So I'm thinking that um, what an incredible story, the trials and tribulations of living through COVID. Some of the players very ill, Travis Green himself. The coach went through some very, very rough times. Uh, we have one of our, um, uh, I guess, bobsledders from the Olympics. Uh, I think it's the... Uh, two-man bobsled. His name is Alex Kopach. Uh, he's in London, Ontario Hospital as we speak, 31 years old, struggling from the effects of COVID. This kid is a, is a specimen, like a, a physical specimen. And he was on TV last night saying how it has grabbed him and grabbed him hard. So let's all take this very serious. All right. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about the NHL. Of course, you're a pick Pittsburgh Penguin fan. Uh, what a story. They are one point behind the Washington Capitals. They're tied in games. Uh, they could they could sneak in and take that first place overall. But you know what? I'm not sure how much you want to do that because you're going to end up playing the Boston Bruins, and that's a team. Uh, They're our demon team. They are our demon team come the playoffs. You know, if we have to go through Boston, you know, it's it's a tough road through there. And especially if the if the um, Bruins get through the first round, that they're hard to beat. They usually go on. So, um, yeah, I, I, like you say, is that worth the loss? I mean, is this like back when um, they uh, supposedly dropped games to get Mario Lemieux? You know, they uh, they tanked their team massively to uh, to get that coup, didn't they? Well, I don't think that uh, you're going to have to worry about that at all. At this particular moment, I think it's Washington, Pittsburgh, New York Islanders. They're all buying. Uh, the Islanders are only three points back. They're all going to play each other in these last 10 games. So it's going to be really exciting to see if, in fact, um, they come through on top. I like the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the Islanders as a matchup. I think that would be a much better first round matchup and let Washington be beat up by the Boston Bruins. Uh, and then it gives them a chance to obviously get into the finals in the Mass Mutual East Division. And they'll end up playing the winner of the North. And right now it's, as we say, Toronto, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and of course uh, the Montreal Canadiens with the caveat that Calgary and uh, Vancouver are right on their coattails. 
Gooch, who do you think, you know, we're approaching the playoffs. There's teams that are in super good form, and, and, and that happens every single season. Edmonton Oilers being one of those, especially in the last couple of seasons. Who's going to hit the playoffs and just fold? Who, who's not going to put up a shout? Who do you think is a big risk of that going into these playoffs? Well, I, don't, I think if I could be honest, I know people may think oh, wow. because the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, beat the Winnipeg Jets, who you know is one of my favorite teams. I like the way they played tonight. Uh, their goaltending was solid. Uh, Jack Campbell played very well, uh, but he's not proven in the playoffs. So I'm going to go with the Toronto Maple Leafs being that team. You just don't know. There could be some issues uh, with goaltending. So that that I'd be concerned. Listen, they're going to score goals. There's no yep. question. But can they keep enough pucks out of the net, especially, as we know, defense and goaltenders, along with a good offense, win games? Uh, I like Washington, obviously, adding Anthony Manta. He's looking very good. Pittsburgh Penguins have added Jeff Carter, another great pickup. Oh, you can't try it. Yeah, you can't count out the Boston Bruins. The way the Carolina uh, Hurricanes are playing is stellar. They look really strong. Florida Panthers have great goaltending, uh, great offensive power. Uh, you can't count out Tampa Bay. I would say Nashville and Dallas have no chance. Vegas, Colorado, they're going to have to come out of that division. One of them has to come out of it, and that's if Colorado, let's say it ends up the way it is, Vegas, Colorado, Minnesota, St. Louis, Minnesota, to wow. be strongly contested matches. Somebody's going to come out of there all banged up. So when was the last time the Wild made the playoffs without last without last season? Uh, I I don't have that stat in front of me, but I certainly think that uh, they're the surprise. That been, they're the team. Yeah, that would be roughly early two thousands, I think, back when Boogie was still playing for them. Yes. Hey, listen, yeah. uh, you know, Aaron Kuzak, you're talking about the Penguins run. I uh, say, and I think you're dreaming. And then he says, of course, the Penguins will tank if they scrape in. Well, they've scraped That's in. It. The issue will be, do they have enough? I think Jeff Carter is going to be a nice addition for playoff. Uh, he's a great all-around player. So I'm just wondering if uh, he can be that catalyst to get them over the hump. Uh, listen, I wanted to do this, of course, uh, just a little bit earlier, I have not yet. Uh, just want to see if I got it. Yes. To all my Australian and New Zealand friends, happy Anzac Day. Lest we forget, April 25th, I want to do a shout out to all our fallen uh, warriors, uh, all of our veterans. Uh, we would not have this opportunity to be speaking here tonight without their great sacrifice to not only your country, but all countries around the world. So we salute all the family members and, of course, all the men and women that we lost uh, in the wars along the way. One of the greatest sayings I love that Australians write is their day on the beach made it so we could have our day on the beach. Yes, and I hope someday we get that beach day back because well, right well, yeah. now in Toronto, of course, we are completely in lockdown and uh, have really... It's been a toil, as you know, and I think uh, there was a comment here just a little bit earlier uh, from Barry Shelley. Um, down here in the States, they are showing protests of people walking the streets in Toronto, obviously not wanting to wear masks. They want us to open up. And of course, we all know the political ramifications and the health risks that are going on there. John, thank you for joining us. John's coming up and saying the Leafs will be exited in the first round. Uh, that's, that's the wrong one, isn't it? Anzac Day here in Australia, Gooch, lest we forget. If exactly. Patrick counts for anything, Sam and Marnie will help <laughs> the things get up. Exactly, as. Exactly. Barry Shelley, I know you're also a serviceman. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Listen, as we wait for uh, Jason to come in, obviously over here in North America, uh, NFL, sorry, the NHL is the buzz. Obviously, as we've got anywhere from nine to 12 games left to, for the playoffs, it's going to be a really exciting playoffs. Of course, up here in the North Division, uh, it is going to be entertaining Pure, so I'm really excited about that. But let's talk a little bit about cricket. I saw we had Brady on, and we asked him if he played. He played it in school uh, as a youngster. I did not play the game, uh, but did 
uh, come in uh, the understanding of the game when I went down to Barbados where they were having test match. So I, ha I know a little bit, a very little bit about the game. Um, and my history of the game is uh, obviously uh, when I arrived in Sydney back in November, uh, I, I know the date was the 25th, 2014. We were at the Star Casino in Sydney and my wife and I were sitting down having a beer and we were looking up at the TV and we had seen a ball hit uh, a player in the back of the head. And unfortunately on that day, uh, Phillips Hughes uh, lost his life to this bowl and uh, certainly sent shockwaves in the, in the cricket world. Tell us a little bit about that moment. That, that was scary for us, especially for someone who's played cricket since he was eight years of age. Um, that was scary because all of a sudden cricket had a fatality. All of a sudden the, the game that we loved, that we played, all of a sudden had a serious consequence. And that, that was hard to fathom, let alone Phil Hughes was, um, I think he made double hun uh, 100 in each of his innings, which um, making 100 runs in, in cricket is I like getting home runs, I think, nearly in every innings, you know, in, in a baseball game. It's such a big thing. And for a debutante to come out and make 100 in the first innings and then come out and back it up and do it again, um, he was just a natural raw talent, um, the son of a gun who also played um, for Australia, Kim. Um, it was just a, a, a normal ball. It wasn't anything vicious. The bowler wasn't trying to be malice. It was just one of those freak accidents. The, the only thing I can say post that that, that um, is fantastic at the base of the helmet, it used to cut off, I can say, roughly here. Yeah. Now what happens, we've got a plastic guard that comes right down the neck and it protects across the ear. So he got hit right here and it um, crushed his artery, which stopped all the blood flow going up and down. Mm -hmm. So um, such a, a scary moment. And uh, Australian cricketers, the next day, we, we had a thing. We, we put our cricket bats at our front door and we left our front lights on around and I think on Facebook, there was something like 13 million photos of cricket bats. The Indians around the world, the English. Uh, Phil wasn't just an Australian cricket. He was a world cricket. He played county in England. He played IPL in India. So he was a much loved person. Um, it, it was a tough one, Gooch. It really kind of leveled us as a, as a cricketing community. Well, we had the, uh, obviously, the Humboldt uh, Broncos accident where we left our sticks oh, outside. Oh, I, I hear... Uh, reindeer on the roof. I right. believe Santa Claus has arrived. As Jason is he getting here, I better make some room because he's a lot bigger than me. All right. I just want to do a shout out to John LaRouche. Thanks, buddy. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. James Duffy said it best. We hear about the North Division and the rest feels like the KHL. Bring on the playoffs. Time to get back to some semblance of order. No question, John. Uh, we will talk a little bit of hockey tomorrow. I look forward to your son, obviously, Jordan, joining us as we talk uh, with Kevin uh, Shea uh, about the NHL. Listen, we are so honored to have uh, a great guest. Uh, Jason, thank you for joining us. I know the internet always plays a little bit of havoc, not only for us, but for many around the world. Uh, but it's so Incredible to have you, Jason Gillespie. Obviously, the young man beside you has told me much about you. Um, my cricket uh, experience is I've never played the game. I've watched the game. Uh, I was, as we were just talking about, I actually was in a Sydney hotel when Philip Hughes uh, lost his life. I actually saw the bowl and, and saw this happen right before my eyes. My wife was with me, um, and it was shocking for us because – Again, when we heard cricket, obviously in Canada, the game is growing exponentially here, um, but I had never grown up with it. I've never really seen it. I went to a test match in Barbados, not even knowing what it was all about. All of a sudden, the whistle blows, and we're having tea and crumpets, so I'm thinking, wow, this is kind of silly. <laughs> um, and then the game, the day was over, and I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time, and she said, what did you think? And I said, Wow, I, I don't understand any of it, but the ball's flying all over the place. That was really cool. But they stopped for tea. I thought that was kind of – if it was a beer, maybe I would have understood it. And then she said, well, what did you think? I, I said, yeah, it was entertaining, but I have no idea. Somebody had 300 wickets. The other team had 200. Who won? She says, what do you mean who won? We still got three days of this. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't. So I never finished off. So that was my first experience with cricket. Then, of course, 
uh, my my third experience was, which is a, I, I, I don't want to say it was funny because it was embarrassing to the your cricket nation, of course. Um, I get into a hotel. I, I don't know if I was in Melbourne or Brisbane at the time. And uh, I walk in the hotel and there's a newspaper and there's a guy with his hand down his pants. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, it says, uh, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, it said something. Let me just sandpaper gate, almost like Watergate. And I guess you'll know, you know the story. I don't have to tell you about it. it was Cameron Bancroft. I guess somebody got the sandpaper out or whatever. And who would have thought of putting your hands down your pants with all these cameras? And he got caught. So that was my second official understanding of, of, of uh, Australian cricket. But what was even more fascinating, the next day, there was this old gentleman on the front of one of the newspapers with his hand. I am no longer the embarrassment of Australian cricket, and I guess it was when 1960, the guy was yeah. supposed to throw the ball overhand, but instead he threw it underhand, and it was a huge uh, scandal. So, Jason, that's as much as I know, other than the fact you are a legend, and I'm honored to have you on our show, Gooch Live, Aussie Style, with Sam Trapoli. Uh, th thank you. Thank you for that, Kerry. And I think you know a little bit more about cricket than you're probably letting on there. Um, the, uh, the amount of your experience you've had with, with our sport, um, you know, I think that's great. It's, uh, it, it is an unusual game for someone. I, I suppose the game of cricket, if, if you haven't actually been brought up with it, um, it's a very unusual game to a lot of people and, and something that uh, it, it, it's a funny one. I, I suppose for us in Australia, it's a bit like um, NFL or baseball or yeah. ice hockey. Unless you actually grow up with it, 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 it can be a bit of a challenge to understand and and find that spark to get that interest uh, into it. Um, and I certainly think that people who don't grow up with cricket, it, it's because it is such a unique game. And um, for all the reasons you mentioned, it, you know, a game can go four or five days and not have a result. And yet it is such an absorbing contest. And most people would just go, how the heck does that work? How, how is that a sport? Uh, so look, I completely understand that. So if I you, you educate, sorry, Gooch, I'm going to try and let Jace, because I wasn't attempting to. Why do we have tea? Where does that come from? Explain the uh, Englishness behind it. Look, I, I, look I, I actually don't know the, oh. the actual reason for it. I'm, um, Dr. Google. Dr. You'd Google. have to look up Google. But a, a, a quick funny story about, um, you know, people getting into cricket. Um, the, there was an Australian physiotherapist. He was with the Australian side for over 20 years. Errol but, Alcott. But, um, Errol Alcott. And his nickname was Hooter. Um, and I asked him one day, how did you get the nickname Hooter? And he said, because he had a growing up and he got into physiotherapy once he left university and stuff, and uh, um, he was always involved in rugby league, a sport that's, that's quite popular here in Australia yeah. and, and the UK. And so he was he was involved in um, rugby league and they always had the, uh, you know, the horn sound or the hooter sound and, and he'd never been involved with cricket before. And his first tour, uh, he, he got the job as the Australian cricket team physiotherapist. He knew nothing about cricket. Yeah. Um, they were on a tour, uh, in the, they went to the West Indies in the early 80s and um, he's, they're playing a tour game, the first tour game, the first day's play and he, he's sort of looking at his watch, he's sort of looking around and this game's going on out in the middle and he's, and I think T got called at lunch or T got called and he's exasperated, he's going, oh, what's going on here? When does the hooter sound to uh, <laughs> to call time on the game? And, and from that moment, the, everyone explained to him the actual game. And uh, that from that moment on, he was called Hooter. And oh, uh, he's you. had that big game for over 35 years now. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've traveled over here, Jason. Uh, in America, Hooters is a whole other animal. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I am well aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that one alone. Uh, but obviously, uh, Cricket Royalty is in the house. Uh, welcome, Dizzy. I've seen this before, but I do have to read this, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, you are a legend, as you know. And I know you're, you're one of those humble guys that don't want to hear all the accolades, but listen, you deserve it, sir. You, uh, you certainly are one of those people that have been captured a nation. And here's uh, Corey Smith. Please say hi to Jason Dizzy from my Uncle Barry Nugget. Reese. He is a close friend and a great mate. So, Dizzy, say hello to Nugget. <laughs> uh, uh, Nugget is uh, just one of the, the great men of this world. Um, 
So Barry, Barry's in his seventies now. He's he, he basically a, um, he's the soul, the heart and soul of South Australian cricket, of the Australian cricket team. So he's he's always he's at every game that we play for South Australia, and and when the uh, cricket matches when Australia are playing in Adelaide, uh, he he's there. He's our like mascot. Um, he's just just one of the the greatest uh, greatest uh, human beings. Uh, wonderful man. Um, South Australian cricket. We have a Bit of a you know I've just come on board as uh, as head coach of South Australia now and um, you know we we actually have a um, a thing called Nuggets Way. It's about how we go about and conduct ourselves on and off the field. And we, we Nugget is our is our inspiration. And um, look, he, he's a, he's a wonderful human being, a close friend. Um, you know, just a, just a great guy and has has been in and around uh, South Australian, Australian cricket um, and football here in this state of South Australia for, for a long, long time. And he, he's a much loved person. So now, of course, uh, you know, uh, obviously Sam is like a little kid. He's got the 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 great Jason Gillespie sitting right beside him. That was supposed to be you were in another room. So, Sam, I'm going to give you your time when it's due. But I, I'm I'm like a little kid right now. Get to know you, Jason, and let uh, some of our viewers here in North America understand what cricket is. And and Sam, you can put us in in kind of perspective of who jo uh, Jason is in comparison to our ice hockey players. And I think Jason, you mentioned about you know people looking at the games like football and baseball i would agree 100 percent that if you're coming over from from australia and watching baseball for except for, ex for example i find it very similar to cricket that it's slow moving but tremendous athletes um whereas if you go to an ice hockey match you know everybody's traveling around on these blades of steel at 30 kilometers an hour bashing each other it's almost like for me afl and and rugby league you know on skates basically so i can understand the comparisons there but you are very fine tuned athletes uh in your own right and one of the things that i notice uh when i travel over to australia is that everybody's got a nickname, right? So you're Dizzy. So I'm only going to say, let me guess why your name is Dizzy. Did you bowl the ball or did you hit the ball? What was your position? I was a, I was a bowler. Yeah. Yeah. So you man, and then you throw, you threw it and you tried to strike the other guy out, right? Pretty much, yeah. So the reason why they call you Dizzy is because those guys were probably swinging at the ball, missing it, and going around in circles. Is that anywhere close? Nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nowhere near. All right, well, that's um, really good. So first, <laughs> first thing that comes um, up here says, I'll, I'll, you, I'll give you. I'll give you the rundown of my nickname. So I, I, I played my first um, game for the South Australian Second Eleven. So the, the second team. I was uh, eighteen years of age, I think, and uh, I, I we went to Melbourne. We were playing against the Victorian uh, Second Eleven. Team and, and one of the players uh, in in my second eleven side, a bloke by the name of Huntley Armstrong, who played a little bit for South Australia as an opening batter, played for Glenelg Cricket Club here in in Adelaide. Um, he just said, "Right, your nickname is Dizzy," uh, after Dizzy Gillespie, the jazz trumpeter, the American oh, jazz trumpeter. So, so that's kind of my nickname. Some people have speculated it's because I'm dumb, um, but I try to put that to bed quite quickly. Um, but no, nah, Dizzy Gillespie, the jazz trumpeter. Okay, I see no similarity. <laughs> I think it's just the last name. It's, it's just purely, the last... purely the last name. That's Same surname. Rich, I can give you another small story on, on nicknames. I walked into the Wyong group and there was a young kid that didn't have a nickname. And someone said, we need something that sticks. And they said, oh, no, mud. So we called him Mud. Like literally, that's that's as easy as a nickname gets formed here in Australia. That's crazy. Hey, listen, uh, Jason, talk to us a little bit about obviously your career, uh, um, the, the the game itself. For uh, obviously us here in North America right now, the game is growing rapidly, uh, and one of the things that's grown the game too is, and I want to get your opinion on this, is that because it is a four game test or you know it takes four days generally I know there are a bunch of new uh disciplines that have been put in place and one of them is that you know they've shortened the game I think it's a one day test or something I as you walk this through for us um uh, non cricketers no, yeah. try and give us kind of an idea how this all works out yeah well Kerry it's a it's a really interesting one because as cricket is so unique in that it has so many different formats to the game. 
Um, so we, we have the only other sport I can think of that um, that has different uh, formats to it is rugby. Like they have rugby sevens. Um, Whereas, you know, in golf, you can play a game of golf over nine holes or 18 holes. Whereas cricket, we have five-day test matches. So test matches which have 90 overs in a day's play that go for five days. That's the epitome of international sport, of international cricket. So, so, so that it's seen as – that's a tradition. The, 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 it's, it's seen as the pinnacle of the game, five-day test matches. Then you have – so the feeder system into test cricket, so every um, country has a first-class cricket system. And broadly speaking, first-class cricket consists of four-day matches and they have 96 overs per day's play uh, for four days. And these games are two innings. Uh, each team has two innings and whoever scores the most runs. Um, and importantly, if you take 20, who, who takes 20 wickets and who has the most runs at the end of that, wins the game. Uh, each innings uh, you know, has 10 wickets. Um, so it's, it's, it, it can be a bit tricky to understand. Then you have, uh, we have 50 over cricket, which is one day cricket. Um, so countries play one day internationals against each other. Um, that, that's 50 over cricket. List A cricket is domestic um, 50 over cricket, um, which is played within, you know, between states, counties, or the like uh, in within a country. Then we have a, a relatively new game in the last 20 years that's come out. It's called T20, which is 20 over cricket. Um, so whoever scores the most runs after 20 overs uh, wins the game. But we also have had in varying forms, uh, I know in England they've played 40 over cricket. Uh, they've played 60 over cricket, 55 over cricket. Um, and these are a one-day cricket. There's also T10, which is 10 over cricket, that is it's just come onto the scene in the last few years. So uh, I'll just jump in quickly for the people that don't know cricket. An over is broken up into six bowls or six bowls. And if you liken it to six throws at the batsman in at the batter in baseball. So an over is broken up into six bowls. So um, 90 over game, you're looking at nine times six. So you know you're looking at 530 balls in a day. So that's that's what an over is. Um, so I've got some pictures here, uh, Dizzy. You don't mind me calling you Dizzy? Uh, Not at all. Okay. So uh, here's a great picture. I think you can handle it. <laughs> We're going to walk through. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I noticed a, a gap in my teeth. Uh, ask, did, have you ever seen in cricket, the guys ever get their teeth knocked out? And it's probably not as common these days, Gooch, only because like a batsman wear helmets yeah, now, so I get hit. I'll get hit on the head uh, on the grill. So a helmet has, unlike baseball where it just covers your ears and your head, it actually has a grill as well, which goes uh, in front of your nose and mouth and jaw. Um, the old, uh, the old cricket helmets were just like what Gretzky wore. Just the, the helmet on top with just a little bit of protection here on the ears, but open face with just a neck, uh, the chin strap. So then on, we brought in the cage. Honestly, it looks like uh, the hat you're wearing. Um, so here's a great <laughs> picture of you. Please, I'm going to show pictures, and then I got a video here I'd like to show. Walk us through this. Well, this was a, a, an interesting time. I, I'd been dropped from the Australian side, Gooch, and then uh, I spent the best part of a, a, a year out of the team. And I got recalled for a, a test series in Bangladesh. So it was a two test, uh, two test matches against Bangladesh in Bangladesh. And, and I got called back into the side. Um, that was actually a picture of me uh, batting. I, I was a bowler by trade. That was uh, what, I, what I made the team for. But... In, in cricket, um, you, you have 11 players on the, uh, that are in the side um, and everyone's expected to bat. Not everyone's expected to bowl. Um, so being a, being a bowler myself, normally you have four bowlers and, and maybe a fifth bowler, uh, whether you have an all-rounder or a part-time bowler that can bowl some overs in a day's play. But essentially you have four bowlers. And I, I was normally one of the four bowlers, so we did a lot of that, that bowling. But everyone is expected to bat, so even us bowlers. So um, that uh, photo you, you just shown there, that, that was of me uh, scoring some runs. Some um, runs, some runs. I, I scored some runs in a test match. And I'm not, I wasn't, ex as a bowler, I wasn't expected to score runs. I was at the bottom end of the innings and um, um, and normally d didn't contribute much to the to the batting score. But uh, that particular game, I was, I was asked by... Uh, my captain to go in um, as a night watchman. Now this is a 
a, a, a weird concept that people may not understand, but what a night watchman is in, a, in cricket is if it's getting close to the end of a day's play and a batting team doesn't want to lose um, one of their designated batsmen, they'll send in a bowler uh, to bat just to get through that night. Um, so you, minimal damage. So you don't lose, um, don't lose a wicket. Um, you get through to the next day and then um, and then your batters can then continue the, the following day. So I got called in as night watchman and uh, I was fortunate enough to, to bat for a long time in that, in that innings and, and score some runs, which is highly unusual. Gooch, remember when I said to you that 100 runs in, in a cricket thing is something huge? Yeah. He scored 201 as the number. What, what did you go in as? I went day? in at number three. So normally I batted 10. Yep. Uh, but I went in at number three uh, and, yeah, scored a double hundred, which is highly unusual. It's never been done before. Imagine Dave Semenko scoring five goals. Uh, well, that he, that's a huge shot. Yeah. yeah, okay. I get it. I get it. Okay, here's a great picture of a team. Obviously, walk us through this. Just uh, just winning a trophy. I think that was the uh, – was that Border Gavaskar? Yeah trophy in, in India. So we won a test series in India for the first time in, I think, 35 years. So uh, the last time Australia had, had beaten India in a test series was in 1969. So that was the first time we were able to uh, win the, the trophy, which is called the Border Gavaskar Trophy, named after two legends. So Alan Border was a legendary Australian player and captain of, of our country. And Sunil Gavaskar was a, a captain and legend of Indian cricket. And they had that, that trophy named after them. Um, we secured that in 2004 um, after 35 years of, uh, of not, uh, not winning in India. Uh, that was a pretty big achievement for us. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm scouring the players here to find you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm pretty I'm a tough one to find there. Uh, I look a little bit different these days. Uh, <laughs> the hair's a little bit, a uh, little bit lighter in colour and shorter. Um, yeah, I, I was the one with the big mullet in the back row. I love it. Well, look at the mullet here. This is a mullet, uh, not of design. It's there. <laughs> we, we I, I, I wish I could grow a mullet these days. <laughs> we we don't have. We're not allowed to go to a. It's been a, almost, I'd say, five months. We've not been able to go to a barber. That's how bad it is over here. Here's a great picture. Look at that. That is a 2017, 2017-18 uh, season. So uh, I'm in the back row there. That's uh, the team I coach. I've coached. I've been fortunate enough to coach the Adelaide Strikers in the Big Bash League, which is a 2020 T20 2020 competition. 20 over cricket, as I referenced earlier. About three and a half hours, four hours at the most. Good. Yeah, so that, that's a it's a short, short, the shortest form of one of the shortest forms of the game uh, of cricket. And I, I've been head coach at Adelaide Strikers for the last six seasons, and that was our um, yeah we won a trophy uh, a few years ago, so we won that we won the title against uh, the Hobart Hurricanes. So, does he? Could you tell me? Are you a traditionalist? Like, obviously, the game has been changing. I played hockey. Uh, you know, fighting was just a standard part of the game. You know, people had cracked the joke. I went to a hockey game to watch a fight. Um, are you, Are you as this game is evolving and shortening it from, I apologize, I said four days, but it was actually five days. I must have slept. I must have fallen asleep on one of the days. Um, uh, I apologize because it, it, are you at all thinking – I like the game the way it was or the evolution of the game. Are you comfortable with it as it moves forward? I, I am. Uh, I think, you know, I, I'm a big one. I, I celebrate tradition. I, I love I love the traditional form of the game. I love test cricket. Um, but I think, you know, what you can do is you can celebrate tradition, but you need to sort of explore new opportunities and, and drive new standards and, and evolve um, as as everything is evolving, people are evolving, society is evolving, um, and as a sport, we need to keep evolving. And I think that's that's something that cricket, I, I believe, does very well. I, I think we're the most innovative sport on the planet, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, I, as I mentioned before, we've got so many different formats of the game. Um, some could argue that we probably innovate too much, um, but we, we have so many different formats of the game. Um, we try to cater as much as we can for the great the great audience. You know, cricket's um, probably the second most popular sport on the planet. Um, yeah. You know, it has a big following, particularly in the subcontinent. Um, 
and in Commonwealth countries, it, it, it has, has big support. Um, and I, I think the real strength of our sport is that we continue to innovate um, and, and set new standards. But to answer your question, yeah, I, I love the traditions of our, our game. I love the traditions of our sport. I'm a big fan of the longest form of the game, test cricket, first-class cricket. I, I think it's 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 fantastic. I love it. Um, but what T20 has brought in as it's given it a, a given cricket a, a real boost and a shot in the arm, so to speak. And it's 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 reaching new audiences and uh, and getting people involved. And and I know certainly from a growth point of view, I think the T20 is a real vehicle that um, that you know cricket can explore going into new markets and, and North America is something I know is somewhere that I know that uh, the International Cricket Council and and cricket around the world really want to get a foothold in, um, you know, such a big market. And we, we feel that T20 is a, is a good starting point in that regard. So very similar to Rugby Sevens, as you mentioned, uh, Canada, US have been uh, become very good at that particular discipline. Listen, there's a bunch of comments on the right-hand side. We'll bring those up. I still want to talk about your career and, and where you are today. And then I just want to touch as we let, as we go. I want to talk about, obviously, this this death that happened in 2000, I think it was 14, uh, what precautions are being done, not only for that, but also for concussions. As you know, we're heavily involved in it. I, I want to try and understand that. But before I do that, I do want to say that I did have another experience with cricket. And it was actually at the ice arena uh, in Adelaide. They used to have, uh, I guess, are they called pitches? I don't know. They had these, these cricket areas. Nets. Sorry? They were cricket nets. Cricket nets. So you could go and practice your batting and bowling. So we had the whole hockey team, Canada, U.S., and the press was there. And we have a guy named uh, Zenit Kanopka, who's the tough, rough, you know, rugged type of guy, had, you know, could fight anybody and regardless of the size. And uh, we were there and, you know, they, they, they had some pros there, you know, doing the bowl and, and you know, the ball's flying like – so I got up there and, all you know, I was dizzy because I was just going, <laughs> I didn't even, t not only did I not see the ball, I never touched one. And then Zenon says, ah, this is, I'll show you. Because we all play baseball. So we're all thinking, you know, you just whack it. So he gets up there and these nets are along the way. And there's just a little opening at the top of one. And the guy fires a ball at Zenon and he's got that blood boiling. And, you know, he wants to show off to everybody and he swings and he misses and, you know, he's beat red and he's, oh, I'm going to get it. So the next week he swings the bat, it hits part of the bat and up it goes and it goes out the hole that's there comes down and there was a guy with his little boy and he hit the little kid on the head and had a little gash. And of course the little boy was crying and I've never seen a grown man cry because he was so embarrassed. And so he said, okay, I'll leave uh, cricket to the pros. So one, <laughs> of the, one of the questions that come here and I like it because it, it's in line with what you're saying, uh, Bobby be a, a great listener from us, very intrigued by the game. How is the game structured for youth? Same structure, or is it abbreviated version? Here in North America, we have now realized we need to do small area games. We're getting these four and five and six years old playing on this big ice rink. And if they even touch the puck in the 30 minutes, we're lucky. So what they're doing is they're making the playing field smaller. Cricket's got a big field. What are you doing for the youth? Yeah, and that's a great question from Bobby. And, and thank you, Bobby, for that. Um, what, what we tend to do with cricket, and as age groups go up, the the playing surface is extended. So a, a normal cricket pitch is about 20 metres long. Um, with kids, it, it gets shortened, and, and it can vary, really. Um, but a lot of it, it's probably traps, probably 18 metres. and Yeah, yeah so that, that gets shortened at under 10 level. Um, and and they, they make the the outfield, they, they bring the bring the boundary ropes in, um, so that, that's a couple of things they do. Uh, sometimes they use a softer ball. Um, they actually make the the number of overs less, uh, as Traps mentioned. The six ball overs they make make it less. So I think you know um, my son plays under under sixteen. I think they play forty over cricket um, to forty overs a side. So on one Saturday they'll they'll field for forty overs. The next Saturday they'll they'll bat for forty overs, and uh, whoever scores the most runs wins. Uh, all bowls each other out. Um, 
So as you as you go up the grades, then you know the, obviously the field gets bigger, the pitch gets to normal pitch length. So I think by the time the kids get to under twelves, under fourteens, they're playing on the on a basically on a full size ground. So um, so that's how how at the most basic level it's structured. We also Gooch, we the boundary around the outside would be roughly about seventy meters, I'd say on average around, um, and we bring that into fifty meters for the kids under fourteens and under sixteens. <laughs> And then I yep. think a little bit further in again for the, for the juniors. Another thing that's done in cricket is that there's a restriction on how many overs, so that's that bowling thing, that a young person can bowl in a day. Right. So if they play junior cricket, they can only bowl eight overs for a day for their game. Right. Then if they're lucky enough or if they're talented enough to go on and play senior cricket, they're limited in how many overs they can bowl in that day until they get to an age appropriate. And then that over rate is extended that little bit more. So as they get to 16, it might be extended to 12 overs in a day. As it gets to 18, they might get to 20 overs in a day. So it, it's just a structure that slowly goes up as the bodies get bigger and stronger. All right. Well, very good, because that's what's happening in all of our sports in North America. Now we're understanding there has to be age appropriate management. And I want to ask you, Dizzy, because a bowl, like I've seen it, you know, they run up and they throw the ball. God, it looks like, and, and please, for my ignorance, it looks like you're using a lot of your shoulder versus in baseball, they use a lot more of their elbow. So we have a thing called Tommy John surgery. I would assume when I'm watching this game that you must, there's got to be a lot of injuries that come in the shoulder and that's why they're trying to manage it by keeping the younger kids not obviously uh overusing the shoulder joint am i right or please correct me yeah oh look there's there's injuries to all parts of the body i think bowlers in particular um fast bowlers probably the, the main injuries are probably back related to be honest lower back um and i, I certainly suffered that and stress fractures um you know, okay. uh, problems and, and the like, because there is a lot of a uh, lot of twisting and turning. Um, you know, when a fast bowler comes in and slams their front foot down on the crease, mm. it's anywhere between seven and ten times the body weight is going uh, through that uh, through that front foot each and every ball they bowl. So if you bowl twenty overs in a day, which was not uncommon for someone like myself playing um, first class international cricket, you know, you're slamming seven to ten times your body weight. Um, you know, 100 over 120, 150 times a, uh, a day, um, and and that can be quite um, quite a strain on, on bodies. So, so look, fast bowlers. Um, I, I've pretty much uh, Gooch had every injury that you you can you can have. Um, cool. I've had shoulders, elbows, back, uh, hamstrings, knees, um, ankles. Uh, you you name an injury, and there's every chance I've had it. Um, that's just the nature of playing professional sport and certainly the nature of, of fast bowling because fast bowling of all uh, sporting pursuits is probably the most unnatural thing you can do for your body. And, what do you mean by uh, fast bowling? Sorry, I don't – fast bowling is what – that's – Can we play the video, Gooch, of that yeah. one, even without the sound? Play okay. the one where he bowls that person. Okay, here we go. Uh, bowls what? Where he runs in, throws the ball or whatever you want to call it, and then he hits the stumps and that person in the maroon walks off with the helmet. Colin Miller again, bowling his off spinners. Oh, well, that's gone in the air. This is going to be safe, is it? No, this might be out. Oh, there's a collision. Oh, a dreadful collision down there. I'm not sure that's the one I was supposed to play. That was it. Look, we're talking about injury, so it probably comes in beautifully. That Look, I'm going to set the scene for the Canadians and for the non-cricketers. Uh, this is the one. This is it. So that's your position, right, Jason? Yeah. Dean. Yeah. So that, that was my first game <clears throat> for Australia. Is that um, you? Back in the mid-1990s. So first wicket. <clears throat> yeah. Is that so you? he was a, a Richie Richardson was a former West Indian captain um, and a legend of the game. And you know, fortunate enough to play against him and, and knock him over. That was uh um yeah, that, that was a, a pretty proud moment. Um See, someone's just written in, Aaron Cusack. The mullet is back with a vengeance at the moment. You'd just be proud, dizzy of your mullet back in the day. It's on trend again. <laughs> <laughs> I just want everybody to look. Really, I did not know this was you. I thought this was just an example. But look uh -uh. at the mullet. You're looking good, kid. Look at that. Yeah, back in the day, I was 20 years old, I think. So 20, 21 years of age. So that's a long time ago. Well, but, can I ask um, a question? If you don't, I know you're going to walk us through it. So I see that you're running. And one of the things, 
what about hit like your your whole body as you say your knee you know planting your your full body weight on the knee the ankle i can see that even the hip rotation uh, but you're also jumping like there's a lot of movement a lot of technical uh moving parts uh you had a yeah. speed leap, didn't you yeah um, yeah so th there's a lot of um yeah a, a lot of movement you, you mentioned hip rotation um you know that that you, that gets you through the crease. So from back foot contact. So when your back foot lands to then your front foot contact, there's a lot of hip torque um, and a bit of uh, trunk rotation. And th this is what I was talking about, where uh, bowlers uh, get can get a lot of back injuries. Um, you know, there's also lateral side bend on on front foot between front foot contact when you when your front foot lands and then ball release. You know, if there's some uh, lateral side flexion. That can create issues with with backs, and, and I certainly suffered from that for a time. Um, so, the the interventions from a, I suppose a coaching point of view and a technical point of view is you want everything moving in line, going towards your target. So, you know all, all your moving parts. And I'm sure it's no different to to baseball. Um, you know, for a baseball pitcher, for instance, you know he would want all his body parts moving towards the batter. Um, so, th there's a lot of similar biomechanical principles there at play. Um, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I remember doing a level three coaching course and, uh, one of the great former players of Australian cricket, probably the best bowler that's ever played that one of the best bowlers ever played the game, the great Dennis Lilly. Um, he summed up what fast bowling was the secret, you know, we call it the secret of fast bowling and, uh, oh, the secret of fast bowling is bloody hard work. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> one of the things, Gooch, the, as you're running in, if I can do this in my hand, uh, so you're kind of, you're leant over as you're coming in, you know, you're going, but as you gather just before you bowl, you flex your body as far back as you can to then come back through and then you're coming through. So your whole motion's going there, but at the point of gather, you're kind of actually coming back and flinging your body backwards and then actually driving it back through again. So it's one of the weirdest actions. No, it is absolutely. And uh, it takes a lot of technique to do it properly. Uh, what's the fastest you've thrown the ball? Or bowled the ball, I guess. You call it. I think I was clocked uh, at 154. I think so. About 97 mile an hour is my fastest ball. Yeah. Hey, well, the puck goes around the same. So here's the question to you, from Barry Shelley: What is the ball made of? Is it a, a rubber, uh, like a lacrosse ball? Is it more like an actual uh, baseball, or is it made of wood? This is a contentious issue, I must say, as well, because Jason is a vegan. So when we're dipping into this, um, the, I'll, I'll let him explain now, but the, the ball is actually made out of leather, so which goes against all of his traditions, mm. So, which is a very hard thing for him. And I'll just touch on it quickly because um, with, the, with the vegan as well, um, the, the belief in what happens on dairy farms. So when Jason was coach of, was it Yorkshire? Yes. Or Sus yeah, at Yorkshire, their major sponsor was a dairy farm. Yes. So then all of a sudden the press wanted to say, you know, you can't have it double, you know, so I know he copped a bit of crap there in the English press and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can't be double standing. He said, just because I'm a coach of something doesn't, I believe in, uh, doesn't mean I believe in who sponsors the club or I believe in that practice. So I just want to get that across. Okay. Let's, sure. let's all put that aside and we'll answer the actual questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what, what a cricket ball is made of. Uh, look, it, it has a leather outer. Uh, the inner is uh, cork and core. Um, and it's sort of intertwined with twine, um, but it's wrapped really, tightly. wrapped really tightly, and it has a leather outer, and it's it stitched together, and there's a seam. Um, so, and, and so that that's what the ball's made of, and that that deteriorates. Okay. Yeah. So Sam will grab a ball, but yeah, the, these cricket balls, and and unlike baseball, where baseball every time if the ball touches the ground, it essentially gets given to the crowd, and a new new oh, ball right. comes in. Um, we only use the, the one cricket ball. So in, in the long form of the game, um, 96 overs in a day's play, 90 overs in a day's play, the new ball is is made available after 80 overs. So you use a, an old ball. You use a ball from new until it's 80 overs old. No, and then okay. you have the option of taking the, a, a new new cricket ball. Good. So I'll just have to take it out of that. It's it just I've got to tell you, this is what happens when you get a fiver. So, like, you know, it's just one of those things. Here. Not, I'm not bragging or anything, mate. Don't know what a fiver is, but it sounds good. I, f I took five wickets in a game. Riley, out. Riley's come to say hello. Riley, out. 
Can so I just say, this, like, uh, this is a this is a cricket ball, uh, Gooch. Yep. So this is what I mean. This is the 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 leather. It's all it's stitched together. So this is the seam. Um, gotcha. and, and joins this, the two halves. That joins the two halves of the ball together. Um, you know, in, in the professional game, uh, it'll normally be it'll be quarter seams. So there'll be more seams on the side here. So it'll be four pieces coming together. But this ball will be from new. It'll go to 80 overs, and then um, the, the bowling team has the option of taking a new cricket ball. So, um, but they might want to keep this one if it's if it's working for them, if it's swinging or uh, or the like, uh, because you're allowed to maintain the ball and keep it in good condition um, by. Sweat and spit and oh, whatever pre COVID, pre COVID, you can do that. Um, a new reference sandpaper gate before, <laughs> and, and what that issue was was because you can't put anything artificial on the cricket ball. So, mm -hmm. what uh, Cameron Bancroft uh, was alleged to have done and, and did was had some sandpaper down his trousers and he put the sandpaper on the ball because what that allows is if you're shining one side and you're letting other what the other side deteriorate naturally. And in this case, with the sandpaper, try to accelerate that deterioration. The the shot, the ball will tend to swing more um, one way. So it's a bit like with a baseball pitcher throwing what are they a curveball? The curveball. Curve curve you know when they put the, the goo on their arms yep. and stuff to get extra grip. Yeah, it, 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 similar uh, principles. Yeah, so yeah. you want to swing the ball, um, or and. And you can accelerate that by keeping one side really in good condition, like with sweat and, and polish, yeah. and the other side you would let it deteriorate naturally. And in that case, the guys tried to accelerate that deterioration by roughing up this side, which in which allowed the ball to swing potentially more. And Goose, there's a classic. If you ever want to know who a fast bowler is when they're dressed in, in their whites, yeah. right on the, the front of their leg, they'll have a dirty, great big red patch and it just goes down and it turns, as my wife would attest to, it turns all your clothes pink if you don't wash them right. And um, usually, you know, you shine the back or sometimes I used to rub it like this on my head. So it would get red here and people think I was actually bleeding. But, you know, you, you just rub it together with a sweat and then, then you would shine it with a lot of friction so that it gets that nice polished kind of look. And like you said, you let the other side go nice and rough. And as it's coming at you, all of a sudden it just moves. Yeah, or go well, yeah very similar to a curveball. Uh, if I was playing the game, the only reason my pants would have been dirty, I would have spilt the tea. Uh, Dizzy, <laughs> listen, we, we could, I, listen, you're, I thank you very much for being able to, you're very articulate in this and, and making it, breaking it down into layman's terms. So even I understand it, which is, I really, I'm really excited about this. I wouldn't mind to ask, I want to spend a little more time with you, but there's a bunch of questions on the right hand side. Would you come back next week one more time and we could actually, if you have time, if not, maybe a, a week later to let's talk about, I'd like to, you to get me a, a baseball, uh, sorry, a, a cricket bat and kind of walk us through it because there is a bet going on. And in two weeks, I actually went out and bought a cricket bat and a ball but it was made of plastic. So I'm not sure I'm ready for it. And then what was even more crazy is, is that Val Silva, who's our producer, who's not on tonight's show, but I'd like to bring him back for this particular show with you. And we can walk through the actual technical parts of the game and we'll get rid of Sam for a bit because there is going to be this bet that I'm going to go up against Sam. And I didn't understand why Val had me dressed up in full body armor. Uh, but Maybe you can give me some tips. So if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd love to have you back. You can, you can definitely do that. Okay. So let's get into some of the great comments and questions. We talked earlier about the, obviously, the youth program. I want to know, uh, and it's Bobby B back. Uh, Bobby, if you haven't already picked up, is a really big uh, component of coaching and, and, and innovation. So he's asking, uh, assume in youth programs, uh, players are encouraged to play all positions. Is that the same in, in in hockey? We try to get at the young age, uh, even we even put them in the goal, which I had five minutes of being a goalie until I got shot in the head at five years old. And my mother took me out and said, you'll never play that again. Is it <laughs> for, uh, for cricket? Yeah, by and large, yes. And, and that certainly, um, it, it probably wasn't quite uh, what happened, certainly when I was a younger player. Um, it was more... The better players got to bat, got to bowl, uh, and do whatever. Um, but I think in the modern day, and I think it's right, is 
because we want we want engagement. We want players to we want kids to fall in love with the game. So we want to give them as many opportunities so that they'll all have a bat, they'll all bowl, they'll all field in various positions. Um, just because we want to create that spark, we want to create that that ignite that uh, passion in in players to to want to play the game. So to provide them with as much opportunity as possible is is absolutely crucial. Um, that the worst thing you could have is is a player standing out there in the field, not getting the opportunity to bat, not getting an opportunity to bowl, and just standing out there, um, not really participating. They'll quickly drop off, and and we certainly don't want that with our sport. And and I'm assuming all sports are, are very similar. That, 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 Engagement is critical. We, we have a saying, Gooch, when we were younger, we, we go from fine leg to fine leg. That, that That's that kid. So that's like literally from one end of the oval, fielding one, then we change ends, and then he fields at the very other end. So he's just got to walk up and down this whole oval. And that's what they do. They used to do to young kids. So as you were a young uh, up-and-coming player, Dizzy, um, did, did were all the matches like five-day tests, or did you, in, in those days, were they shortened for younger no, kids? No. No, so basically, Gooch, until you get to um, first class cricket or second eleven cricket, so you, you, international, you, international and first class cricket, you don't. There's only it's only ever two day cricket. Okay. Um, so you're growing up. So you'll play as a kid. You'll play Saturday to Saturday. Uh, sometimes it'll and a lot more now is more every Saturday. It'll be more a one day game. So uh, particularly at younger levels, um, but. More, more so, it's at club land in, in club cricket. You'll play two day cricket, so you'll have say ninety overs one day where you'll bat, uh, bat for ninety overs, and then you'll bowl. The, you'll come back the following Saturday to finish that game. Um, so games normally two day games are over a two two uh, weekends. So mm -hmm. you'll play Saturday and Saturday, um, and whoever scores the most runs or whoever bowls the opposition out uh, wins. So uh, Sharon Trapolino, of course, we know who she is. She runs the household, I know, of traps. Uh, T20 cricket is a fun night out for the family, music, fireworks, and has renewed the kids' interest in cricket. Before you comment on that, we, we in ice hockey, uh, we used to have these games. Obviously, we there has not been a change in the 30-minute or 20-minute uh, periods that we have. We have three of them, but we went into overtime, and overtime could end up being as long as it took. And then we came up with changing it from five on five to three on three. And it really has sparked a big back interest in the hockey again. Kids are getting to play this three on three in smaller rinks and it's really got them engaged. Is that also something that's maybe helped the youth, you know, to make it compact, that it's really action packed. They get in, they get out and then they can move on uh, the next day. Has that helped the game? In that yeah, certainly shortening the game. Uh, Gooch has has helped and uh, has aided with um, keeping kids interested, um, and this is where T Twenty has, has certainly um, ignited and started started that with with young kids and and get them interested. And I, I think it's just a new way to get new people in into our sport. And then what we're what I think cricket is seeing is that the, the kids come in and they see this Twenty Twenty cricket, they fall in love with that and they enjoy that. Um, not all kids, but some kids then go, oh, so what's this first-class cricket? What's this test cricket all about? And then that's how they get their, essentially, their introduction into our sport. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, that, that I think, where the uh, where it's going. That's a real benefit of it. Um, T20 has, has certainly brought in new audiences. Um, you know, as Sharon has sent in, there's, um, there's a lot of fan engagement. Um, certainly with the Adelaide Strikers in the Big Bash here in Australia, the Big Bash has taken cricket by storm, uh, taken the world by storm. It's a very popular, it's the most watched um, domestic sport in Australia uh, now, uh, most most watched on television, um, you know, and, and it, it's very, very much targeted at the fans and, and the TV um, audience. And, you know, the fan engagement at the grounds um, is is as good as any sport going around the world. Would you liken it to a, a home run derby of baseball a little, where it's just more about the big hits rather than, you know, yeah, the – Yeah, the, the, yeah. Because in that shorter form of the game, you know, in, in the long form of the game, we, we, we do what's kind of blocking where you just hit the ball nice and easy and you, and you take a long time. Whereas in this game, from the first ball, you're trying to hit the ball out of the park and, and it's just excitement plus. So the, the administrators of our sport – yeah, so the administrators of our sport, Gooch um, – 
with T20 and our big bash league, the BBL, the number one thing is entertainment. That That's yep. the whole cornerstone of the whole tournament. And, um, you know, that, that filters into, um, you know, what we talk about as a team. Uh, you know, we talk in our team meetings, we, we want to have fun. We want to go out and entertain our that's fans. Great. And that, that's a real cornerstone of, of, of what T20 is all about. Well, here's Aaron Kuzak piping in saying <laughs> you're going to need two to three parts uh, with Dizzy. Uh, hours to chat, no question. But I think what I want, want to do is let me finish off just these points on the back because I don't want to take up all your time uh, tonight. I really look forward to getting back with you. And let's talk about the technical part. I want to look at a ball. I know there's some other videos here. Maybe, Sam, we can go through the videos and actually show the techniques. That would be really cool for people to understand the difference between a baseball swing swing and a bowl swing and then that mechanics of what you were talking about that would be very interesting I know for uh for Bobby and and the likes uh one of the biggest traditions of cricket is those horrible hats like the one Sam is wearing talk oh. about the old school that oh. Right. Aaron, oh. Aaron 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 sacrilege um which I will what I will do Gooch next time I will bring in my baggy green oh. so <laughs> It's the holy grail of sporting headwear. Um, yeah. You know, players, uh, you know, you strive to to get your baggy green. That's It's something that is, is held dear. Um, can, uh, the, getting the baggy green means that you are playing test cricket for Australia. Okay. So that is the very peak of international cricket, the very peak of Australian cricket. And what happens at the start of that game when that new player is playing his first, you know, they, they take it off and they've got it in a lovely package and, and they hand it across to them and it's a massive thing. Steve Waugh, one of the ex-captains, he has two of them, I think, because it deteriorated mm. now. But he had it in his bag for so long, it deteriorated, it rotted, it, it, it just, oh, but... <clears throat> wow. Well, Gooch, Go Go what I'll do, I'll bring my baggy green in and yeah. you can see how deteriorated it, it got over the years. Um, okay. it, it's Cricket is one of these unique sports in that, um, like, unlike baseball where I, I'm assuming a, a baseball player will get a new cap almost every game or every second yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. We wear one cap. And you have you, you can tell how long a player's been playing by how deteriorated right. their cap is. I look you forward know, to it. And it, they tell stories. Um, so, and I'll save that for next time and I'll Fantastic. tell you all the stories of the baggy green. Well, Dizzy, do not take it as a, a any sort of disrespect from Aaron Guzak. <laughs> not at all. I'm no, not. he just likes to, you know, this is a, we're way too nice here, right? Aaron, just all just because of Aaron used to be with us on this right. show. It used okay. to be Gooch, myself, and Aaron. Aaron's just taking a break for the moment. So, Aaron's one of our. Well, I love his uh, little face there. He's oh, got the Fonz. Yeah. yeah, I oh, love yeah. that. Fonz yeah. is one of my yeah. heroes growing yeah, up. Yeah, because. <laughs> He actually thinks he's the Fonz, but uh, we'll let him in <laughs> on it uh, a little bit later. Uh, here, uh, about how fast are balls thrown? Thank you, Robert. Robert Wine's a big uh, – in baseball, pitchers can throw up to 100 kilometers. We've already heard from uh, Dizzy. They can get to about uh, 95 miles an hour, which is incredible. Uh, Dizzy is one of the great coaches in the world, so you're in good hands, Gooch. Now he's trying to get on your good side. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's too late, Aaron, too late. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think, uh, obviously, Dizzy, I, the way you're presenting yourself, and, and obviously you're a wily veteran, there's no question, uh, but more importantly, you make it easy to listen to. People sometimes are intimidated by the fact that they don't understand the game. That's what happened with hockey. I don't know if you knew this, but back in the old days, the, the game's really fast, right? So uh, you got to try and follow this black puck. And you know how Americans are. Don't forget I'm Canadian. The Americans had to find a way on TV to put this little blue trail on it so that trail. people could actually see it. But anyways. Um, I loved it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that, that explains a lot. Says tradition it kid. Says it tradition kid. All right. So here's another gr great comment from Bobby uh, B. We are so much corporate and community support to grow the game of hockey here. It's, an ext it's extremely expensive in North America, but we are doing our very best to support regardless of our social economic status. Is that the same in cricket? Um, obviously, cricket doesn't seem, you know, there's not a lot of equipment. Um, you know, obviously in Australia, for ice hockey to become a one of the top sports, it, it requires um, infrastructure. 
Obviously, there are a bunch of fields all over the place. You know, there's fields uh, abound in, in, in Australia. There doesn't seem to be a lot of equipment. So is it an expensive sport? We are finding it right now to play elite hockey. It's almost getting elitism. You, you have to have money to play it. Is cricket the same in your country? Yeah, look, it's a great question. And I, I think the biggest some of the biggest challenges, which you know, I've touched on how how cricket is trying to address it, is the time factor. Cricket goes for a long time, and and we're competing with other sports such as Australian rules football, rugby league, soccer, uh, and the and the like um, for you know for kids to get involved. And I, I think one of the biggest handbrakes has been the time factor in cricket because it can go for a long time. This is why I, I think T Twenty is such an important vehicle uh, going forward for our sport. Um, the, the time issue, the space required is, is quite vast. You need big fields to play cricket on. Um, it's very difficult. To, you can't really play cricket in small small spaces unlike you can with, with some other sports. So football, for example, you just need a football um, and a bunch of kids and they can run around and kick it around and, and that's yep. great. Cricket, there is an expense uh, associated with it. With um, Cricket equipment is not cheap. Um, so to bat, you need pads, gloves, uh, protection, other protection, helmets, bat. Um, you know, some bats are, can be very expensive. Um, and, you know, uh, shoes, you know, uh, if you play on turf, you need spikes uh, for your shoes. Um, so there's look, there's, there's lots of um, costs associated, but I think the biggest handbrake is, is the time commitment. Gooch, I can definitely say from a parent who's had to purchase both, um, I know ice hockey is way more expensive. Um, the gear, like we bought a second-hand set of gear for Marnie that cost us a thousand dollars, and then that was when she was little. So, and then the fees for Marnie to play her sport is around about eight hundred to nine hundred dollars every season. No, not every year, every season. Now, mm -hmm. cricket, I reckon a kid can get a good, good, solid cricket kit with all the gear they need for probably four, five hundred dollars, and then that'd be pretty good quality. Um, so, and then the fees for that for their year. Is one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Okay. So yeah. it's a lot less. Yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, Aaron's coming up. He's trying to make amends here. I wrote that <laughs> with a hot comment. Thanks for throwing me. I didn't only. I didn't only throw him under the bus. I reversed back and ran. Back and going over a couple of times. He did, he did come back with a very good statement here. Uh, would you like to have played T Twenty Dizzy as a bowler? Great question. Uh, well, I actually did play T Twenty. Um, Dumb question. Was, right at the back end of my career. So I played one game for Australia, uh, one game for my state. And T20, the, the, at the back end of my career, when it was just starting, was it was quite uh, – it was more a gimmick than anything else. So I don't think Australia really took it that seriously for a few years. Um, you know, England – it started in England, and England took it very seriously very early. I think their first T20 tournament was back in 2003. Uh, Australia didn't start playing it domestically until 2007. Um, but the big change in in cricket landscape was the creation of the Indian Premier League and mm -hmm. the glitz and the glamour, the, the money. It's one of the most watched um, sporting events uh, or sporting series in the world. Um, there's a lot of uh, lot of finances. It, it's it's made uh, cricketers into instant millionaire, multi millionaires. Um, you know that they per per game they're probably the highest paid sports people on the planet uh, in terms of a on, on match on match ratio as uh, certain players. Um, yeah, um, but I, I did play. I played for uh, a couple of counties. I, I played for Yorkshire. I played uh, that probably the main part, and I also played in a in a league. Uh, it was known as a Rebel League in India, which predated the Indian Premier League. It was okay. called the Indian Cricket League. And it was actually a very good league, um, but it wasn't endorsed by the Board of Control for Cricket in India. Um, uh, as good as a league it was, because it wasn't endorsed by them, uh, they didn't give it any legs. And, and that's how the Indian Premier League was created. And so, in a way, I was part of a, a bit of a trailblazer with the T20 yeah. stuff. Love it. Goose, can we, I, I know we, we're getting a bit tight, but can we show that video of where the man in red's hitting the ball? Uh, I will have to look it up. 
I will find it. Uh, and Aaron has come back now and said he'll be on nice, next week. <laughs> and, and I think for next week, I'll let you. I'll step back a little bit because I am fascinated by this. I love. I love listening to you talk, and, and I can just envision you know people that really know what they're talking about with cricket will really really enjoy this. All right, so let's see if I can pull up. Is it this one? Sorry. I just apologise beforehand. This, yep, this is it. <laughs> this was his uh, game for South Australia. His, was it the one twenty twenty? Was no, this was a uh, was this domestic? Sorry, this is a domestic fifty. Watch, watch this. So this is Dizzy Batty. This is bear in mind. It's one of my best mates bowling to me. So he's just hit a home run. He's just hit him out of the park, and that that person bowling bowls at about one hundred and fifty kilometres per hour. So it's not coming down slow. They're good mates. Look at the big smile. He's, he's one of my best mates, this guy. So watch what he does next. This is so. This is just dizzy, just picking it up beautifully, and that's called a shot to cow corner, basically. Yeah, deep good. mid wicket for for the cricketers. So this is the follow up delivery, Gooch. I wish we had the sound. So see what he's doing there. He's touching his ribs because he's got a, a rib cage on. He's got a guard there on his ribs. No doubt. Here we go. Oh, he threw it inside at you. Oh, bouncer. Yeah, it, it missed my um, – I got through my shot too early and uh, it's hit me in the – basically, I got a bruised lung out of it. Um, <laughs> Do you speak? It, it missed you everything speak? and, and, I, and I, I'm not the – I don't have much padding there. Um, so I had, a, I had a, a rib guard on one side but I didn't have it on the other and I swung through. I got through my shot early and then it hit me on this side where I didn't have any protection. And uh, Brett, who was the bowler, as, as I said, I played a lot of cricket with him for Australia. Um, one of my really great mates. Uh, he just turned around and walked away. Walked straight back he to his bowling crease. He didn't even ask if I was okay. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And then dizzied him for four of the next ball and then another bouncer and uh, went on. It was awesome. So uh, Corey Smith has been watching Dizzy Nugget says hello. That's fantastic. Uh, I love Nuggy. He's a great man. Uh, Sharon is thrown in. We book annual leave each year from work just to, so we can go sit on the hill at the test. I think it was your last Adelaide test when you did cat on a hot tin roof. Was it your I mean, Boxing Day test? Was it Boxing? Um, was it Boxing Day? Um, uh, oh, doing a little dance. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was that was actually. I did a little dance when I got a wicket, and that was the. Do you ever remember that um, movie Jerry Maguire? Oh, come yes, on. That, Show me the so money. Well, Cuba Gooding Jr. He did that little dance when he got a touchdown. That was that was uh, that was what I was trying to do. I didn't do it very well. Sharon, <laughs> Sharon, and her friends that after being at this test for six and a half hours mm. drinking and then onto the uh, pub afterwards, I've walked in to pick her up, and they're all trying to do the dizzy hot um, cat and hot tin roof. <laughs> These are all in, not in good shape. So, yeah. hey, more big bash. I'm referring to. It's a challenging game as a bowler. Everybody loves the big hits. As a batsman, obviously uh, bowling and batting, we always see the home run hitters. Uh, pitchers, if they throw a no hitter, obviously get a lot of recognition. Or if, but it's always the big bats. And obviously, you knocking that ball out of the uh, out of the ballpark. Uh, your good friend, good friend, uh, <laughs> he wanted to teach you a lesson. Uh, Bobby B coming back and saying, "True gentleman of the game." I have a great deal of respect for people who stay involved in a game post their playing days. Australia is lucky to have people as passionate as you both and wish you continued success. Bobby, thank you very much for always being a great uh, ambassador for us. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, ask Dizzy about his highest score innings better than most his teammates have ever done. We did that already. Is that this yeah, 201? That Has yeah. anybody, what's the most, is that, is that the most ever or is there, is there a bigger number? So, so to put it in context, it's not the highest score ever in our game. Far from it. You know, the players have scored four hundred and three hundred and 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 things like that. But I, I was sent in, as I mentioned, uh, a role as a night watchman, and I think the previous highest score by a night watchman was about one hundred and ten or one hundred and twenty. Um, so, and and scoring a hundred is very unusual for a night watchman. I think only. Two, one player had done it previously. One or two players had done it previously, but I managed to score two hundred and one. Um, so I, I'm not sure it's a record that's going to be surpassed anytime soon. Um, because yeah, it's it's look, it, no, what's we can go into this forever, but it, it's a 
it's a slightly controversial tactic, I suppose, used by um, used by teams. Um, you know, one train of thought is, you know, sure, bat is bat. You know, if, if if it's good enough for you know batsmen to do their job, go out there and and they're probably best equipped to face the the good bowling. Um, yeah. Whereas the other side of the coin is you want to protect your bat, your good batsmen, so that they can come back the next day and and make most of it and score the most runs. So, Goose, basically, if, if I'm the next person to go into bat and I'm one of our best team batters, I have this option that my captain will give me to say, right, do you want to go out or do you want to send a night watchman? So we send in That's one of the lower the player batsmen, minutes. you know. So so we send, say, for instance, we send Dizzy out there and we hope he doesn't get out, that he can just kind of keep the ball out and we don't lose another wicket moving into that next day. So for him to go in, the likelihood was he'd get out early. That's normally what happens to a tail ender. For him to go on and do that, I mean, it's talked about on you know in, in every continent. So um, it was such a big thing. And then yeah. did, did he, you made your 100 or the double 100 by French cutting? No, no, I just chucked one off the... Oh, no, that was the 50. That was Sorry, the 50, 50. When, you're, when you're... I'll get... We'll do that next week. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we, we'll catch up. I want to I want to go into this 201. It's very intriguing for me. I want to understand. You can walk us through it. Uh, obviously, it's a big moment. And, of course, Aaron is, again, brown-nosing, saying Dizzy was a massive <laughs> cult hero in his playing Aaron, game. Aaron, I Aaron, write... call me out. Wipe it, Aaron. Wipe, wipe. <laughs> no, I would say that... Now, Dizzy, that's kind of an insult, Aaron, when you think was a massive cult hero. I still think you are. Just dig that hole. Just dig. (laughs) All right. Two more questions, then we're done here. Aaron's coming back. Who was your favorite player you played with? Tough to narrow it down to one. I understand that. So I want to hear this. You can just don't don't elongate the answer because you can save you can save some of this for next week. But I want to hear who is your favorite player you played with that all the Australians would know his name. Or... I, I loved playing cricket with a bloke by the name of Adam Gilchrist. Uh, he was a keeper batsman. Um, he changed the game. Wicket keeper, being a fast bowler, you, you like your wicket keeper to take catches off you. Um, the catcher in baseball. He was like, oh, I love catcher in baseball. Uh, so he, he took catches. But, um, but he, he's a bit of a trailblazer. He, he changed the game the way a, a wicket keeper went out and batted. So he batted number seven for Australia. Uh, he'd go out there and uh, and really take the bowling on, uh, and he'd open the batting in one day cricket. Um, so he was a he was a he was a highly talented player. So versatile, so versatile. Great team man, just a, just a great bloke. So this is a lead up to the final question: uh, Who was the favorite player you played against? Who you said wh- around the world it doesn't have to be an Australian. Somebody you said, holy, like. We would say Gretzky, you know, no question, the greatest player of all time. Is there somebody that could just snap off your fingers right now and say, Can, can I have a guess? <coughs> you can, can have a guess. I, I'm going to guess it's the Gretzky of our game. I'm going to say Brian Lara. Brian Lara's, a, yeah, it, it, it'd be up there. It, it's a tough one. Brian Lara, Sachin Tendulkar uh, from India, Brian Lara from the West Indies. So I think, in answer to your question, it's any you want to challenge yourself. You want to play against the best players. Um, so to challenge yourself as a as a fast bowler um, to bowl to these guys and Brian Lara, uh, I managed to get him out a few times. But I'll tell you what, he scored a hell of a lot of runs against me and against us. Um, it, it's uh, yeah, so probably Brian Lara and then Sachin. If I was in India, I'd be saying Sachin Tendulkar because I wouldn't be able to leave the room. Um, <laughs> but but look, just you want to, as with any sport, you want to test yourself against the best, and these guys were the best. Um, and you were saying about the highest score, Gooch. Brian Lara has the highest score. He right. scored 400. Um, yeah, an Australian called Matthew Hayden, another good friend of Dizzy's, scored 380. Um, to beat Brian, and then Brian, a couple of, uh, a year later, said, oh, "I'm going to take that title back." And yeah, just made a lazy 400, and declared, didn't get out. Actually, just kind of said, "I'm walking off the oval. I'm done. Thank you very much." <laughs> Listen, uh, great explaining of the game for Canadians. Obviously, we will learn more. Obviously, next week uh, we're looking forward to the next show. But the final question has to go to Bobby B. Uh, what's the biggest rivalry? Uh, what? Nation, I know the West Indies uh, is huge. I know that India, we've talked about it, Pakistan. Uh, what's your nation that you would love to go back and have another crack at? I think we've developed some wonderful uh, rivalries. Obviously, our uh, our friends across the trench there in New Zealand, uh, we always have great rivalry against them and uh, great, great country to play cricket against and um 
You know, we, we have a wonderful history against, you know, in more recent times against India, um, certainly. But I'd have to say our, our biggest rivalry is for our um, uh, trophy called the Ashes. Um, and it's between Australia and England. And the Ashes urn, which is the trophy we play for, is about four inches high. It's this tiny little, uh, tiny little urn that we uh, that we fight for. Uh, and the history of that is is that when England uh, lost, there was a there was something in the newspapers when Australia beat England back in the 1800s. Um, so a newspaper columnist said that uh, we're going to burn the that the ashes uh, are going to be burnt and sent, the ashes of English cricket are going to be burnt and sent to Australia. And uh, and then a bale was burnt from the from the stumps and and that's how that's how that was created. Yeah, it's the big, the biggest trophy we play for, but it's this tiny little cup. <laughs> it's tiny, really small. It's like literally it's this big. Well, I'll get some photos and stuff for it's next week's show. That big. Fantastic. So uh, as we end the show, I had an opportunity to watch. It's big here right now. It's called All or Nothing, and it's the uh, about the All Blacks and their series. I guess it's called. I get they play against the Lions or whatever that is in in rugby, and it, it happens every I think twelve years. It happens. Is that the same with cricket? How often does this the Ashes? How often are they played? So every uh, every two years. Um, so it. Every four years, Australia will be – every fourth year, Australia will play for the Ashes in England. And conversely, in the two years in between, England will be in Australia. So an Ashes series every second year. And that's a five-test <laughs> series. Mm. So, so five test, five five-day test matches, um, and the winner of that series um, has the Ashes. Big trophy. Can you drink out of it? Hey, listen, guys, <laughs> I can't thank you enough, Dizzy, for you actually getting – Obviously, the internet not working uh, and, and whipping over to uh, Trap's house to do this for us. I really, really, really want to thank you. Not a lot of people do that. It just shows you what type of character you are. And, of course, wearing uh, the, the Legends hat well. And I, I do not want to make fun of the, of the hat because when he came on with that hat, I, I thought he was a caddy. And so I really, <laughs> I really want to apologize because I didn't know what the hat meant. So now that I know it is an integral part, I really look forward to seeing yours, Dizzy, next week and, and you giving us more enlightenment, not only on you, the player, you, the coach, and we'll talk a little bit about the concussion platform and, and the safety of players and that, but I really think it'll be cool for you to explain to us the finer points in, in, in cricket. So uh, thank you, guys. I can't thank you enough for taking some time out on your busy day. And, of course, you've been watching Gooch Live, Aussie style, right here in Toronto. Well, they're in Adelaide. We will With see the Adelaide Oval right behind us. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.